Z-spheres are a unique object type that aren't useful for rendering animation, 3D printing, or pretty much anything other than establishing basic form. So it's basically a form that gives you a basic structure. And in order to do anything with them, other than admire their beauty, you'll need to convert them to a mesh first. And then you will be able to use them in any one of these fields which I mentioned before. So let's see how that works. So I've got a simple sphere man open here. So these spheres objects have a special sub menu called adaptive skin. So let's turn on preview to see what we get. And here we have the adaptive skin. This is what we created in the last lesson. Okay. So I hope you have worked on it and maybe you have something with the toes and the fingers, but I have the one that uh, basically what we have created now. Here we have the adaptive skin over here. Now, uh, I'm also going to hit Shift F right now to turn on my polyframe, or just simply click here so that I can see the polyframe here. Or Shift F on the keyboard, so you know you can have the polyframe turned on, so you can see uh, what's going on here. Uh, basically, what is I have to just move this one uh, quite up because I cannot see the uh, actually the whole thing because it's just only giving me the colors here. Okay, so now let's get into the adaptive skin. Now there is a couple of things going on. First, it turns it into a squad, uh, like you know, if I were turn on, let me turn on the preview mode, so you can see now. If I zoom in, so you can see how the wireframe is going on over here. So first, what it did is that it had turned it into a quad mesh, and now it's uh, also have turned it into uh, it have provided the dynamation to it uh, to sort of fuse everything together and give it an even surface topology. Now personally. I don't like the dynamic layer effect on this, so I'm going to turn this uh, all the way to zero. Okay. And I will wait for a while. And you can see that. Uh, let me do one thing. Let me turn off the preview and turn it on back. Okay. Now you can see that the dynamic is completely gone. So, uh, now what you get is something that's much cleaner. I actually prefer to work on, on it this way because it just generates a more simple mesh that's easier to subdivide. So you can also change the number of subdivision. Uh, okay, like here, right now it is two. So maybe let me turn it off for now. Maybe I can make it three. Okay, and then turn this on. And you can see it have now much more uh, better one. Or maybe let's make it five. I think five is too high, but it's it can produce something smoother. Uh, keep it three. Okay. So yeah, better. So now you can see that it has turned. Let me close this one here. It has turned my Z sphere model into a mesh, which I can sculpt on, smoothen it up, and you know create more details over it here. And if you don't want to add more subdivision over here, so what you can do is that uh, you can keep it lower and later on you can subdivide your, op uh, your object. So uh, don't worry of the subdivision because uh, we will go into subdivision later on in this course. So just right now you should know uh, how the subdivision uh, like you know, uh, affects the adaptive skin process over here. Okay, so let's turn off this preview over here. And now there's one other setting called used, uh, which is uh, use classic skinning. So I will turn this on. It has a couple of little advanced features here, and I'm not going to worry about these. They don't really do much, uh, you know, uh, so you don't have to worry about all these here. But the main thing is that let me just preview it again on. 
if we turn it on let me just turn this on as well so you will see it's more look like this okay so uh you're going to see that the effect is much different it's much blockier and actually not as appealing to work with so for the most part i choose not to use classic skinning uh it's unless the preview is giving me issues without it so this is just a preview so in order to start working on it we need to click uh make adapter but let me do one thing turn it off i don't want this one okay preview back so what you have to do is that you just have to click on this uh, make adaptive skin so what uh, it will do is that if i uh, if i click on it so i just clicked it so what it did is it created a new tool if you will go here and then here you will see there is a tool here which is called skin z sphere okay so this uh, is a new skin tool and if you want so you can go back to your original one okay uh back here and then you can change this one or if you want to go to the one which is uh, been uh, created you can start working on it or if you want to do some changes you can go back here to the original one here i think this is the one or maybe this is the one i think this is the one and you can see that we are still here and already all your work is here but if i will go to the one that it produced and if i will go to the adaptive skin uh first of all the adaptive skin uh is not here because i will be already applied that so that means this is uh, already done and original one also you have so you also have the original one and you also have the one which has already become the mesh now we can see that we got an object that is just simple geometry now we can always go back to this one and change uh, the original one where we have right now and we can create some more so let's see what happens if we do the similar thing with the zizu model okay so let me close this one let me go to the file open i don't want to uh, save this one so i will open the one that we created in the last class this one let me turn off my for the sphere over here okay now here if i will go back to the adaptive skin let me uncheck this one and preview this so you will notice that it will create something as this but it's not giving me a quite of a uh, like you know unification over here it does not look like it is uh, unified like the way i want it so this can be a good situation where we actually want to use classic mode so if i will uncheck this one use classic skin and then preview and this you can see that will be a quite good start with it so you know if i will make it as, as an adaptive skin and then if i will go back here to the one where i have this skin greyhound okay and then what i can do here is that i can simply smooth out all these by pressing shift key and you can see how it is smoothing it out and this is how your result will be okay and let's see one more thing here let's go back to my original one here okay so the objects in the zizu are a little bit more advanced and they are also a little bit more complicated which means sometimes you're going to get some weird glitches like the one that i did right now and it's not uh, applying any changes of uh, a lot of changes so you have to do some experiments with these adaptive skin options and see which suits best so in this case it's actually helpful to turn on to use classic skinning okay and maybe um, i can reduce the intensity here okay or maybe one of these you can check but you know i don't want to use this one maybe dynamesh a bit i can increase so maybe 35 yeah dynamesh can also give you a much better result here but it's too high okay 
Oops, not that good. So maybe 100, let's try. So 100 will be good. Okay, or if you want more density, and you can do that. And then, you know, simple, just make it up. And then once you have this, uh, if you're there, and you can start smoothing it up, and you can see it's creating a nice small result over here. So Dynamesh can give you much more, uh, you know, uh, organic feeling over here. So my smooth brush is too strong here. So let me decrease the intensity. I will press shift on my keyboard so I can go to smooth brush and I can decrease this smooth brush intensity. So this will not smooth it up just like it was doing before. Maybe a bit higher. Yeah, better. So in this case, uh, you know, I used the Dynamesh and then I previewed, uh, like I converted that. So what this uh, this did is that it actually turned each individual, uh, you know, like my uh, object, like Z sphere in and uh, like segment and join it to our own geometrical object. But there is not actually, uh, you, you know, like the ones which I did before this one. This actually did not fuse them together because there was no Dynamesh on it. But here I have the Dynamesh on it and I used uh, like a value of 100 and you can see that it fused it together. So Dynamesh uh, uh, like helps you to fuse them together and it looks like you can compare both of them and you can see uh, like the result. Okay, so without Dynamesh and with Dynamesh. So of course you can use your clay tool over here, okay, and you can build up some more stuff on it, and you can s smooth those too. But you can do so many uh, things over here. So you know, you have different choices to work on your object. It's totally up to you. So you can use. Uh, other stuff over here and if you uh, if you can see there's a couple of different ways to go about turning your z-spheres into a mesh that you can start sculpting on if you decide that you need to make some changes you can always go back to the original one okay uh there is the original one i think this is the original one and this is the original one yeah Turn off the preview. So this is the original one, and then you can do the changes if you want, and you can again uh, do the preview if you like it. You can make an adaptive one. Another uh, tool will be created. So if you have uh, liked my video, please click on the like button, and I hope you have understood about how you can turn these these views into meshes and work around. And Please subscribe to my channel if you have not subscribed to it uh, to it yet and give me a shout out if you have a your own uh, social media account so help me to get more subscribers and i will get you some more full courses tutorials and seminars and webinars and you know live sessions so guys uh, thanks a lot for supporting me and i do need your support as well so we'll meet in the next class so till then take care of yourself and bye everyone Thank you.